Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Jared Beckwith. I'm a registered EEG technologist and in today's video, I'm going to be telling you guys exactly how to become a registered EEG technologist. So you guys can have REEGT after your name as well. So there's multiple different pathways you can take in order to become a registered EEG technologist. Some require one year of college, some require zero years of college. So you can actually do this job of EEG technologists without, without attending any years of college. There's many different pathways and you can still get the credential after your name. And I didn't know this before I started, so I just wanna give you guys all your options so that way you guys can become EEG technologists as well. Registered, board registered guys. Here on the Abbott website, it has the four different pathways you can take to become a registered EEG technologist. Now, the first pathway is to be a graduate of a accredited NDT program or neurodiagnostic technology. Now, that's what I did. It took one year, some are one year, some are two years. I would pick one that is one year so you can get done as fast as possible and start making money on the job because they don't pay you for your clinical hours while you're a student, so you'll probably be working for free, essentially, and going to college for one year while you learn to become an EEG tech, and you learn everything you need to know, and you need to just have documentation of 50 EEGs and a current CPR certification. Now, the second pathway is similar. I guess it's just not a accredited formal NDT program, so that's a little bit different, and you just need uh, documentation of 100 EEGs. Now the third track is pretty interesting. So if you're already a sleep tech, RPSGT, or if you already have an associate's degree, you only need one year of clinical EEG experience in the hospital. You need your measurement document and you need documentations of 150 EEGs and you need 30 EEG asset credits and of course the CPR certification as well. So they wanna make sure you can measure and mark ahead correctly, that's super important. You, you're not a registered EEG tech without being able to do that. And they also, I guess, want you to have one year of clinical EEG experience before taking your board exam to become board registered, which makes sense. Now, if you have no college experience, you're, you don't plan on going to school and you want to be self-taught, maybe you can just learn from my YouTube videos and get your way into a hospital somehow. Some people don't have any college and it takes them five years of clinical experience. This is the fourth pathway we're talking about. It takes five years of clinical experience, a measurement assessment, and documentation of 150 EEGs and 60 EEG asset credits with, of course, the CPR certification. Now, the fourth pathway is the longest because it has literally no school, but if you can get yourself into a hospital, you can become a registered EEG tech even if you never go to college. So a few questions you guys might have are, how do I document these EEGs? So you just print out the form on the Abret website and just write down whenever you do an EEG, just document it and your supervisor will sign off to confirm that you did in fact do that EEG. Now that's the first thing. And another thing that was on a lot of the pathways was a measurement assessment. Now, before becoming a registered EEG technologist, you have to learn to measure, guys. So first step is to learn the International 1020 system, which is where all the electrodes go on the head and their names. So for every EEG all across the world, everyone, every doctor that looks at the EEG is gonna be able to know, oh yeah, this electrode's here, this electrode's there, and any doctor from anywhere can read it. It's a standardized system. Each electrode goes in a specific spot. So you're gonna wanna get a mannequin head and teach yourself to measure and mark an entire head with the International 1020 system. Now I have videos about that. I'll link some in the description on my YouTube. And once you're done measuring and marking a bald guy and wiping it off, you know, put some tape on there so you can reuse. It's gonna take you a lot of tries, guys. Uh, I probably practiced measuring definitely over a hundred times before I did my first patient. That is the number one priority because all we have to do as EEG techs is measure, mark the head, put the electrodes on, and record the best quality study for the doctor. And if you're just starting out especially, don't worry too much 
about reading the EEG waves because that's technically the doctor's job. And so don't worry about that, guys. Don't worry about that if you're just starting out. Just learn to measure mark heads and be able to know where all the spots of the electrodes go. First a bald head and then a mannequin head with hair. And once you're able to do that, then you move on to the next step, which is doing an actual patient. So if you know the International 1020 system, you know how to measure and mark a head. Next step is you have to convince a hospital to take you on. And I've seen some students, they'll never learn how to measure and mark and they'll be a big burden to the hospital. But if you are as a outsider applying to a hospital, you already know about the 1020 system. You already know how to measure and mark. They, you can have them test you. I can teach you how to measure and mark for free. They might let you in in the hospital because this is such an understaffed profession that we need help essentially everywhere, especially in rural areas. It's probably almost impossible to find an EEG tech in some rural areas out in America. So if you can prove that you can measure and mark ahead, you know the 1020 system. Even if you can't read the EEG waves, a EEG lab will probably take you. you you're going to want to go to like a hospital environment so you can learn from the different EEG techs around you because you kind of pick up things. That's the best way to learn by picking up things from the people around you, you know, hoping that they're good people and they know what they're doing. You'll learn a lot, you know, but if you if they're trying to send you off by yourself somewhere and you're brand new, uh, yeah, I'd be cautioned against that. You don't need to be board registered to get paid to do an EEG. So, but if you're a student, they're not gonna pay you. So there's multiple options. If you can't find a hospital that will take you with no college or nothing, um, you can always sign up for one of these colleges and they'll help you find and connect with the hospital, but you won't be getting paid during your school years, which is okay. I mean, it, you really don't know what you're doing. So, I mean, why would you expect to be paid? So I worked for free for a year. I went as a student, learned a lot in college, came out after a year. I took a little, definitely about six months later until I ended up taking the EEG board exam, maybe a little more than six months. So I used my book knowledge from school, also everything I picked up in the hospital and it, it went well, guys, I, I passed the test and I'm a registered EEG technologist. And as a starting salary, people don't like to talk about salary, but as starting out, you should be making at least $50,000. If you're not, there's a problem, guys. You're gonna have to renegotiate your contract because if you say yes to it, you agreed to it. So make sure you're making at least $50,000 because supply and demand, there's not a high supply of EEG tech. So you can at least negotiate 50 grand for yourself. Maybe not if you're literally brand new, you have no school and you're just getting a hospital to take you on and with no college, they might offer you a little less because you literally know nothing. But if you've gone through a year of school, you've graduated, you should be able to you know, negotiate for yourself. And if they ask why you're asking for so much money, say, Jared says I'm worth at least 50K. You guys can send him this video, but yeah, because I just want the best for everyone in our field. It's a really good field. It takes only a year of college maximum and, well, two years if you go to a two-year school, but then you're paying money for school and you're still not getting paid. I mean, you get better experience, but um, I like to get paid to have experiences, guys. So first, try it without college. See if you can get your way into a hospital. I'll teach you guys the fundamentals so you can at least try and email, reach out to hospitals, see if they're looking for EEG techs. If that doesn't work, you can always reach out to a college and get, and then they'll help you connect with the hospital, get you your clinical hours. It'll only take a year. And by the end of it, you should be making at least 50 grand. That's, uh, that's pretty much it, guys. If you want to become a registered EEG technologist, there's four paths. Go on the ABRET website, A-B-R-E-T. That's the people who give out the credentials and it'll show you the four pathways. You can literally choose any of the pathways to become a registered EEG tech. That's pretty much it, guys. So hit the like button if you learned something. I know this would be helpful if I was just starting out. So hit the like button, comment down below. What more questions do you guys have? I've seen this question a lot, so I thought I'd answer it here in this video. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.